All right. So I did the stupid thing of recording without recording my voice. <laughs> so this is the video that I just recorded. I'm going to talk over it. So I am creating here. Since I'm recording over my recording. Ground plane. And I would also create a, a platform that the bowling ball is going to roll off from. So again, this is a sphere for the ball. And I want the sphere to stay at zero because that's easier. Zero is the ground height, basically, right, in the channel. So that means I'm going to take the ground and bring it up. There you go. Again, the focus today is bowling ball. Make it heavy. Not super for the real heavy, but a bit more stylized because you have to really learn to, um, you know, change the, uh, the sensation of weight between a basketball and a medium ball and then the beach ball later. So I'm going to have it start there, roll off that edge, fall down, and then bounce up a bit, not too high, because give me want this to be heavy, come back down, and then come to a roll, stop a little bit. I'm playing here, and I kind of make a sound, you know, like, to me it's like, roll, stop. I make a lot of sounds, I talk a lot when I animate, so it gives me kind of a sense of timing. I'm putting these all back to zero, just to be precise, because zero is the, the height of all this. And then it's going to roll off. And when you play this, you can see that does not look good. Because everything is linear. My default tangents are linear, as you can see here. And nothing is, is you know, finessed yet. Now, what I'm going to do as well here is that I set too many keys. I, I Basically, I set keys everywhere. And I don't want to... I want to overcomplicate things. So I'm adding another bounce here. So I want two little bounces, a big one and like a tiny one. But the translate is way too complicated. So again, you play this here. It's going to go through that first section at the top, a couple bounces. But that timing change here in the forward translation is too wonky. I'm not a fan of this. So I want to simplify things just like in the basketball demo. I'm going to flatten this. Bring down that tangent so that the timing is it rolls over and it's going to lose energy when it hits the ground here. So I'm going to set a key there. And then technically the, the timing is going to change a little bit. So I'm going to have that broken tangents flatten out a little bit. This will be adjusted a little bit later. But you can see that the ball comes to a bit of an ease in stop. And just like before, I want to have a little bit of an overshoot, kind of roll, stop to an end. So I'm overshooting here, a little spline bump, flat that tangent, and make sure that the rest works. Let's watch this here. The height. So as it goes through, see that it immediately drops down. So I want to flat that tangent. And the same thing with the basketball. I'm going to break those and make sure that the tangent is above the green line. Zoom in a little bit. Flatten these two because you want that to ease in and ease out. And then you can see here, I got to break the tangents on all of these. Bring the tangent up above that line so there's no ease into a drop. Because if something drops, it's always going to accelerate. And when you play this, let me see. See that? It kind of goes over the edge. So you have to kind of decide, and I'm doing this at the, at the very end. That's some variations of, of this. But basically, when you when you have the ball roll over, depending on the speed of going forward, it's going to go a bit above that edge, or you can also just have it roll really off the edge. So I'm zooming in here in the graph editor to adjust the height so that that ball is really right there on the surface. As it goes forward and starts to go past that edge, I'm going to adjust my TY, the translate, set a key there. And then as you go forward frame by frame, we're almost not into polish mode already. I'm going to adjust the height so that really feels like that ball is rolling off, off the edge. Again, depending on the forward speed, it can roll off or kind of float above in the air a bit before it drops. That really depends on the speed. This one I'm adjusting right now, so it just kind of rolls off that edge. Again, you have to adjust the tangent so it doesn't have a flat curvature in terms of straight down. So I want to make this bit a bit of hang time. So you can see here I'm adjusting, setting another key. And then bringing this up a bit higher, like literally just adjusting only the height and not the forward translate, which is going to be a bit wonky. That's my prediction there, but that's one way to start at least. You can see it goes off that edge and it should just be okay. It's very close to, you know, 
depending on if you move forward faster, it would be different. Now, as you do this, you always have to adjust all the tangents. I'm going to zoom out and play this. And then there you go. That is your heavy ball. Boom. Got one bounce and a tiny bounce. Roll stop. That's actually not bad <laughs> for the first uh, pass. Again, if, I, if I'm just watching this. But you might argue that maybe it doesn't roll off that quickly. It might float in the air a little bit. So that's when you start adding some more keys in terms of translates. And you can just adjust a couple things there. So maybe it's too close to that edge. And I move it a bit away from that platform. Right? That's why I broke that tangent to kind of move things a bit. Check out the beginning that it's moving fast enough. Then you can see that the ball is now hovering above that surface a bit, which is not unrealistic because, again, depending on the speed of moving left to right, it's going to roll off that edge and be up in the air a bit before it drops. If it rolls really slowly, that's when it would really roll off that corner and then drop immediately. So that's something for you to decide on the speed of the bowling ball. I will go kind of in between, have maybe a bit of a float. So I'm adjusting the height here a little bit so it doesn't completely roll off. But you also don't want it to just kind of float to the right. So it already starts a little bit with the curvature. Always adjust your tangents there so there's no weird bump in the timing. And then that into the drop. That seems pretty good on both sides. Zoom in here. How does that go? Yeah, that seems pretty good. Zoom out. De-click here and zoom out a little bit more. There you go. So if you watch this again, that last roll, too long. I don't need that much time. Let's go back. Technically, you can see you don't need that much in terms of like surface distance because it doesn't, it doesn't roll as much. There you go. So that is your drop right there. I hope you can see this because I am playing this and recording over it again. So I hope the frame rate is okay. So you can see how heavy this feels. Now, you can still adjust a few things in terms of height on those bounces. So here are kind of the variations of this. So I'm going to make this less high, which then in turn, you have to make the second one less high. Once you do this, though, you have to adjust this, the surrounding tangents. You can see you don't want this to go too high and then back down in the middle and back high again. So you look at these. That seems pretty okay. So less high. And if you play this, boom. Less of a, of a jump on that first bounce and a bit less on the second one, All right? If you adjust this manually, you can move that bit in. And of course, after the first going up in again, because if it doesn't bounce as high, you don't need to keep the same timing of up and down because then it starts to be a bit too long. So watch this here. It's definitely faster. Boom. Plays a couple of times, thankfully here. So hopefully that recording will show how this feels. You got that first impact, a tiny bit of a tremor on the second one, and then the roll at the end, which I feel like I would adjust. Is that what I'm doing? Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. It feels like that roll comes back too fast. So I'm extending the time a bit here on that roll, but also want it to come back a bit slower. And that's what I'm going to do now. Go back to your select this to your translate. So it goes down. I'm going to set another key, if I remember correctly. That's right. Huh? A key here. So I want it to ease in a bit longer. It's a bit more softly there. But then that first one is a bit too sharp. So right there, I'm going to adjust this. It doesn't go as far in overshooting. But it's going to take a bit longer to roll back. So roll back. That's nice and soft. And back. Boom, boom. Roll, stop, and back. That's a kind of polishy moment for that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Now, again, this can be adjusted depending on you know the feel you're going for. And also, a lot of students kind of do something where like that, that first bounce is too high. And then here's the problem. So if I remember correctly, I'm going to adjust the height, go much higher on both of them. The second one should be a bit less, so it's not you know, the same height on both. But I'm not going to change the amount of time it takes. So it's still going to go up the same amount of frames 
and down the same amount of frames. I'm still adjusting the tangents. All right, there you go. But because I went higher, but I didn't give it enough time to go up and down, you will see this when I play this, that it's going to be really fast. Doom, doom. See that? It's just too stroby. It takes the weight away. And that, and that recording is going to be probably wonky to see this, but it goes up and down, but only over so many frames. I think I have it over three frames or something. That just doesn't work. So if you adjust something where I want it to go higher, you're going to have to adjust the amount of time it takes to go up and down. That's the balancing act, right? And if you look at the, the tangents, you can see it's fairly straight. Yes, it has a curve at the top, but it's it's mainly straight. And again, this gives it its weird timing. It's not, it doesn't have enough of an impact and hang time as it is at the top. So what I'm gonna do now, if you go that high, I would predictably extend the time, right? So it goes up over two frames. That's not good. I'm probably adding two frames to this, huh? There you go, two frames. And of course, on both sides, you wanna go up and down, fairly mirrored. On something like this, you can you can be fairly mirrored in, in, uh, in your timing. Adjust the tangents, right? So you don't go too high and then suddenly down in the middle and high again. And the same thing on the second one. That seems a bit low there. There you go. That seems kind of okay, but adjust it. Now, boom, boom. Again, because it's recorded, it might skip some frames. So hopefully, as I keep playing, it will show you. But it feels a bit better because you go higher and you give it a bit more time. Now, if you adjust something manually, at one point I know I adjusted this manually. So if you just bring this down lower like this, because I want a less of a bounce on the second one, make sure you adjust the curve. See, this is what happens when you just adjust things without checking the graph editor. So you're going to adjust the curves. It does not have that weird bump. Feels a bit better. Definitely flatter there. So now you have a first one that's high and a second one that's a lot smaller in height. Feels a bit weird, right? Because that first one is pretty high. But realistically speaking, if you had a bowling ball, um, it will probably bounce higher the first time and have a few more bounces. But this is a more stylized idea approach of, I want this to bounce and just not, not bounce too much to really make it feel heavy. All right, play this a couple of times here. Boom, ba boom. But again, this feels too high. I would adjust this. And I think my last adjustment is to make this a lot less. So let's go back to the... Apex here. I'm also adjusting the end because if it doesn't bounce as high, you have to change how much it rolls, but I think that is later. So I'm going to bring this lower. Of course, you have to reduce the time because it doesn't go as high. Because if you go lower, but give it the same amount of time, it, start, it will be slow. It will start to feel like it's floating. So again, you adjust the height. You're going to have to adjust the curves. It's a constant back and forth. You have to be disciplined about but anything that you move in your animation. So it's not as high, and the second one is definitely slower. Uh, the, not, as, not as high as the first one. I believe my last adjustment to make this even smaller, right? First bounce, not as high, and then the second one, not as high as well. So adjusting the time it takes to go up and down, and then the second one, I believe that's my other adjustment here, Always checking. Oh yeah, this is, you can adjust the length by grabbing all the keys in graph header and moving them. I just do it in the timeline because it, it, it grabs all the keys. Here it shows you that it goes up and down and up again. So always adjust your tangents. That seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. So not as high on the first one and a tiny one on the second one. You can see this. You can even go lower technically to really exaggerate this that it drops it almost. Ba -bang! It's so heavy that it barely bounces. What am I doing here? I'm probably going to go lower. See, I remember. <laughs> so lower, second one, you're going to go lower as well. Adjust your, your tangents. And at the very end, I'm going to also adjust the amount of, of roll to the right. Because if it's that heavy, it doesn't go up and down as much. You're really giving it the feeling of weight. But if it starts to roll and roll and roll, then again, and it doesn't feel that heavy because if it's it wouldn't roll as long. So again, that's the balancing act of you have to decide how high the bounces are over how much time. And then that feeling of weight needs to also match in its roll. I hope that makes sense. So let's watch this. Super heavy, right? Now it barely bounces. 
that feels that's to me like a really good boom really good feeling of weight boom it barely bounces it's just so heavy but because of that i'm assuming i'm going to change there you want to translate it's just too much at that weight it wouldn't roll that far so i'm going to adjust the last three bring it up and then afterwards i'm also going to adjust the rollback but this is your initial curve change and the broken tangent is fine because the tangent that's broken is when it's when there's an impact because the moment the ball hits the ground it's going to lose energy not just in height but also in forward translate and that's why it's okay to have a linear key in with, with a broken tangent there but i feel like that rollback is a bit too much given the weight it's a little bit more adjustment but it's not too shabby I think I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's where the recording ends. There we go. So that is it. Scrub forwards to the very end. The heavy, heavy ball. I can go back to here. I uh, hope that makes sense. As always, uh, you can just reply to this post if you have any questions. Hope that was insightful enough in terms of um, you know the frames. Hope not too many frames were skipped. That I played it enough so you can feel the weight, but. Definitely experiment with that, with the height, the length of, of, you know, how far this is going this way, how high your bounces are. Is it going to be boom, ba -ba boom, or is it going to be boom, right there? Like there's almost no bounce. That's the important stylization of a bowling ball. All right, that's it. Thanks.